Well, I think probably the Transport Minister, Michael Wood, was trying to uh, solve problems in the future. When he agreed to meet, and we had these people on the program, um, with a group called Restore Passenger Rail, who had been a complete pain up the bottom to Wellington commuters for weeks. When was this, about three weeks ago, Kelly? Four weeks? September. Oh, it was September. And they were, I know, they were gluing them, super gluing themselves to roads. They were absolutely, they were just messing up commuter traffic, supposedly, supposedly because rail has stopped in Wellington, which of course it hasn't. Um, and really, we interviewed them, we found that they were just a bunch of extreme greenies and associated, I think, with the Green Party or with Greenpeace. Um, while the government considered the people at the front of Parliament during the occupation to be a river of filth, they took quite a different attitude with the group Restore Passenger Rail. And Michael Wood agreed to meet with them, which seems strange to me. And I'm now going to introduce our guest, uh, Simeon Brown, the National MP for Pakaranga. And Simeon, I presume that Michael Wood met these people who was, had disrupted hundreds of thousands of commuter journeys he met them in the hope that they wouldn't do it again because they said, we're protesting to get a meeting with the Minister. Would you have done the same if you'd been the Minister, Simeon? Look, uh, great to be on your show, Sean, as always. Uh, look, no, I would not have uh, done the same as them. Michael Wood was, um, as you mentioned in your intro, the, uh, the, the Minister who, who called the protesters out the front of Parliament a river of filth um, because they were disrupting the lives of Wellingtonians, but then he was more than happy to... Uh, meet with a bunch of uh, protesters who had disrupted the lives of tens of thousands of Wellingtonians on the motorways. It's, it's incredibly inconsistent and hypocritical. Yeah, it was. Do, do you uh, think that's because they were associated with the Green Party or Greenpeace? Well, I think he, I think he genuinely thought that these people would, um, would, 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 are nice people. I, I don't, I don't see, think he actually sees a pro too much of a problem with what they were doing. It took him a while to actually go out and criticise uh, their actions. Um, and I think he genuinely thinks they're nice people. Well, the reality is they've been causing all sorts of mayhem. They've been stopping people get to hospital appointments, get to work, get about their daily lives. They are uh, expert radical disruptors, um, and actually they should have consequences, not cups of tea. But he didn't get what he wanted out of the cup of tea, did he? They said they well, wanted a meeting and they'd stop breaking the law. He has well, the cup of tea, and what's, what, what's the outcome? Well, they've now said that they, they didn't like how the outcome of the meeting was uh, and that they're going to continue their disruption at some point in the future. And so what I think, uh, you know, we've all got to fear is more of the same, uh, which just shows what, an, what, a, what, a, what a stupid decision it was for Michael Wood to get involved in this dispute in the first place. He shouldn't have ignored them uh, and left it to the police to deal with as uh, these people are actually all being charged for different various offences. Personally, the National Party or the National Party doesn't think that the offences are, are tough enough. Um, actually, if you're going to glue yourself to a motorway, there should be uh, more serious consequences than what they are facing. But um, but you know, this is this is the foolishness of Michael Wood and and, and and how he thinks he could have solved this problem. He's probably just made it worse. Yeah. Okay, uh, Simeon. But where do we draw the line because i think people turn up to protest sometimes their groups aren't well formed sometimes their thoughts aren't well formed but people in positions of power i feel have a right to at least inquire as to what they want and what their beef is well look i think there's appropriate ways and means for those messages to be had there's a select committee inquiry going into into, into regional passenger rail at the moment uh, and that's the appropriate forum for those conversations uh, to be had. I note these people decided that they'd use their submission to um, you know, they'd submit via Zoom on you know on the on a motorway. Uh, you know that's not the way to to have your say and to make sure you get your point across. The rail uh, protest uh, you know has a has a very important role to play in a democracy. However, when you're going to glue yourself to a motorway. Um, that's gone too far, and there are, there, are there are consequences already for those sort of behaviours. Um, but I think there needs to be more serious consequences, particularly if they're going to continue to threaten uh, breaking the law, which um, you know is what I've heard them say they're going to do. Um, are they terrorists, Simeon? Look, I wouldn't use that term. I think that's that's, uh, that's a pretty you know serious uh, term to use, but. 
what they are doing is causing significant disruption uh, but you know gluing gluing themselves to um, to motorways uh, and you know these are these are routes which are used by tens of thousands of people to get around their daily lives their freedom of movement has been compromised um, and so the, you know they are causing significant disruption they're radical disruptors is how I would describe them and um, and they need to be held accountable for those actions particularly if they continue to do them yeah Simeon look while we've got you here and thank you for clarifying on that issue and it was because he's the guy who used the river of filth analogy, it was just such high, the height of hypocrisy by, uh, by Wood. I well, want to talk... Well, this government yeah. does have, a, have, a, have a, um, a history of meeting with all sorts of interesting people. You do remember they met with the mongrel mob last year as well. Yeah, yeah. Simeon, I want to talk about Nanaya Mahuta, because I know yeah. you have been one of the national MPs who has uh, forced an inquiry which doesn't seem to actually be making any progress. And yesterday, a full port, uh, court press... Uh, by Luxon and Seymour uh, because it appears that Nanaya Mahuta um, may have misled the Prime Minister and her caucus uh, in mm. backing or acquiescing to the Greens' entrenchment uh, provisions in Three Waters, which is being rolled back. It just seems to me that she has some special protection from accountability. Well, look, I think you well, the reality is that um, Prime Minister at the moment is backing her minister, but um, you know the, the political uh, the, po the politics of this is, is quickly moving. I think underneath the Prime Minister, and that New Zealanders are very much aware of what Nanaima Mahuta um, sought to do by trying to entrench the law, going against the cabinet, uh, bre breaching the cabinet manual, and um, and I think you know ultimately we're calling for the government or the Prime Minister to sack her. And the reality is, um, you know, as the pressure continues to build, I think at some point the Prime Minister will have no other choice um, but to do just that. You've, you've been around politics long enough to see how these things, uh, how these things go. Yeah, but sometimes, um, and I think also looking at the polls, a government just doubles down in its dying days. Well, and look, I mean, this government is looking increasingly desperate, is, is the way I would describe it. They're becoming more ideological, increasingly desperate, um, but, you know, this is, um, you know, Nanai Mahuta is, has got uh, a certain power base within the party. That can't be denied as well. Mm. So there are certainly internal uh, issues which are coming to the fore. Uh, and, you know, our job as the National Party is to hold them to account and to, you know, stand up for the principle of equal citizenship. Okay. To, Look, seeing uh, you mentioned equal citizenship, um, we had uh, Roe Edge... Um, from the Save Women Sport Australasia group on this morning. And she expressed mm. disappointment at the National Party's reluctance to engage on these absolutely BSHIT crazy uh, guidelines released uh, by Raining Castles from Sport New Zealand regarding transgenderism in sport. Um, does your caucus have a response to that absolute lunacy? Well, look, I haven't. I'm not. I'm not across the detail of that particular issue. Um, it's not in my portfolio area. But I mean, I've I've been clearer in terms of in terms of my views on this this issue, and that um, you know there's a difference between gender identity and between uh, what someone's biological sex is. These are difficult issues, and um, they need to be very carefully thought through. And I think you know um, it's something which will cause significant concerns in some parts of the community. Um, so, look, I don't have a specific answer to those those questions. Um, Take the caucus, Sammy, and it would be good for you guys to come out with a position on it. Look, I, I'll, be, I'll, I'll raise that with our spokesperson. Good on you. Um, and meantime, Simeon, what do you think should happen next time these um, restore passenger rail people um, block a Wellington motorway or an arterial route? Well, look, I think the reality is we've said um, there should be more serious consequences. We've put a, a bill forward to increase the penalty to a maximum of two years imprisonment. Um, actually, there needs to be consequences if you're going to, you know, physically blockade a motorway yeah. in, in the way that they have. We've, we've drafted quite specific legislation which um, actually takes from what the UK government and what the New South Wales Australian government has done, which is to put a specific offence in place where people seek to do this type of radical disruption. It's not about stopping people from protesting, um, but it's about basically saying if you're going to actually just, just do something for the purpose of disrupting, 
uh, physically disrupting uh, in, in the way they have been doing, like gl- gluing themselves to a motorway, there should be more serious consequences in those in those instances. I hear you, Simeon, and I thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. That is Nationals MP for Pakaranga, Simeon Brown. Michael Wood, you idiot. Oh, come and have a cup of tea. You're not rivers of filth. And then they turn around and say, we didn't like your cup of tea. Get stuffed.